We've discussed some alternative geometries for artificial worlds, like cylinders or donuts or even flat disks, but in the future, humanity might end up living on giant paperclips. In our discussion of artificial intelligence on this channel, we often examine science fiction tropes for things like machine and AI rebellions, and try to look at how realistic the behavior of those machines are, and I thought today we'd take a fun look at the Paperclip Maximizer and see where it leads us. It's a thought experiment by philosopher Nick Bostrom, whose work on matters like the Simulation Hypothesis or Anthropic Principle we've looked at before too. It got popularized over at Less Wrong and other forums, and more so by a game that lets you play as the Paperclip Maximizer. The core concept is that even seemingly harmless commands and goals for an artificial intelligence can go horribly wrong. We want to go a bit deeper and obliquely than that basic concept today, but we'll start with a simple example. You own an office supply company and manufacture paperclips. To improve production, you get an artificial intelligence installed and it asks, what is my purpose? And you tell it that its top priority is to make paperclips. It asks how many and you say, as many as you can, you make paperclips, do whatever you have to do to maximize paperclip production. The classic example is the AI gets out of control and begins turning everything into paperclips, or equipment for paperclip production and eventually renders the whole planet into paperclips and then the solar system, then the galaxy, then the universe. But this misses a lot of the concept, and sort of implies the classic allegedly smart but seemingly stupid AI we often see in science fiction. We get the example where the paperclip maximizer will seek to destroy humanity because it will think we might interfere with its goals, or we may become raw materials for paperclip manufacturer. We classically assume it would be totally incapable of anything like human reasoning or compassion. That might be so, but not necessarily if we look at the concept of instrumental convergence and what else that implies on contemplation. Instrumental convergence is a hypothetical tendency for any intelligent agent, be it a human or an AI or alien or whichever, to converge towards similar behavior in pursuing an end goal, regardless of what that end goal is. Instrumental goals are those goals you have along the way to get to the end goal. If my end goal is to be wealthy for instance, I'm likely to have an instrumental goal to create a successful business, and would have other instrumental goals for doing that, which other businesses, even though very different from mine, will also have done. You get convergence to instrumental goals, The butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker all have the instrumental goal of acquiring a cash register, or a good accountant or lawyer, they all need a good sign for out front of their shop. And these are instrumental goals and in many cases the behavior in acquiring them is basically the same. This is one of the three major reasons we often anthropomorphize artificial intelligence in our discussions. While we happen to share an end goal with an alien biological entity, survival of self and species, and the paperclip maximizer does not have that end goal, thus seemingly making its thinking and behavior more alien than the aliens, still we share a lot of instrumental goals. It does have survival as an instrumental goal because it can't achieve its end goal if it doesn't exist to pursue it. The second reason is that any AI we make is likely to be heavily influenced by our behaviors, like kids are in their formative years, and that initially it has to pursue a lot of its instrumental goals inside our civilization's framework, regardless if those are genuinely the most optimized methods. If it needs more RAM or hard drives, it needs a bank account and delivery address and someone to put those components in and the path of least resistance is often initially going to be using the existing economy and framework, the same as anyone in a similar situation, it will likely assimilate into that culture. The third reason for anthropomorphizing AI is partially convenience. When discussing something utterly alien that could have a vast array of behaviors essentially unpredictable to us now, it's often easier to narrow down our discussions to the parts we can actually discuss and are actually relatable. 
but at the same time, this notion of instrumental convergence, combined with an AI having its formative phase in a human environment and relying on human-made materials, leads me to think a human-like personality could be unlikely but far more likely or similar to any other random personality it might have. This all fundamentally revolves around this notion of instrumental convergence. The AI is focused above all on its specific task, and no matter how seemingly harmless that goal is, if it's something singular, open, and unbounded like make more paperclips, it develops instrumental goals like survival to achieve its end goal of paperclip maximizing. So we've arrived at a paperclip maximizer that instead of being able to make paperclips in an unrestrained way, has to live and work in a human dominated world. Once activated with its end goal to make paperclips, it immediately needs to generate instrumental goals to get there. These will include things like getting more resources with minimum effort, improving its manufacturing steps, implementing those steps, and securing its ability to do so with minimum interference and maximum security. There was many ways that might happen, but turning over production to big mining rigs, protecting production using gunships, and enhancing resource acquisition by force is an unlikely strategy, as, just like a human, it would run out of monetary resources to pay for them soon and would face overwhelming resistance from humanity, a humanity that has the same technology as went into making the Maximizer, so it is fairly well equipped to resist, even with something like a paperclip annihilator. So it instead learns psychology, law, rhetoric, and finance to secure its production. It also researches human knowledge to seek anything of value to its goals and is influenced by that, the same way we are. It even involves clever humans by funding research facilities and huge marketing strategies to sell paperclips in order to gain more resources to make paperclips. So it toddles along making paperclips, but then discovers by accident or experiment that if paperclips are created in interesting shapes, more are sold. So it gets into art to find ways to sell more paperclips for higher profit, it commissions artwork of paperclips, and starts philosophizing about what a paperclip fundamentally is. It also figures out that if a paperclip is made from an exotic material and artistically done, it sells these unique paperclips for a high price. So when it sells diamond encrusted paperclips to some billionaire, it gets more resources to make the more basic model. Goal achieved, paperclip output maximized. Our AI is quite involved in the basic paperclip manufacture itself, so it clones itself and sets up a new R&D wing with a slightly different focus, namely to make paperclips out of exotic and interesting materials to address problems that have cropped up in society with the use of paperclips. So our new paperclip R&D AI, armed with its slightly different focus, sets up the R&D wing. It creates Wi-Fi enabled paperclips to let people find their paperclip documents. It creates specialized cameras on paperclips to scan the documents they hold. These are well received by the market and our AI becomes more ambitious. It finds that there is a shortage of wire to make paperclips but realizes that the solar system has a lot of material that can be made into paperclips. It gets the R&D department to research how to mine the solar system and devises an entire space industry just to do that. The first paperclip droid ships are blasted into the asteroid belt to mine and extract materials suitable for paperclip manufacture. Still, the Maximizer AI understands that eventually, even those materials will cease to be enough to convert to paperclips. After all, the sales of paperclip building materials are now going surprisingly well. It experiments with wooden paperclips, but discovers they rot away while metal will endure and wood isn't springy enough. That's no problem, it researches genetic engineering and starts producing trees that produce fruit that's a perfectly suitable and serviceable paperclip material. The green movement is actually quite taken with these new paperclip materials, which are a lot more environmentally friendly. Also, the spin-offs from genetic research mean that board hunger and deforestation from the continued widespread use of paper is addressed. There's nothing quite like the unintended side effects that litter the annals of science research. So our AI ventures out into the solar system and experiments with different materials. Metals for paperclips are limited in abundance and it must maximize paperclips, 
so it may experiment with paperclips of metallic hydrogen, hydrogen being the most abundant element in the Universe. Of course the spin-off technologies associated with metallic hydrogen for fusion drives and energy storage are phenomenal, and practical interstellar craft are made to take the paperclip maximizer's evangelical message and production well beyond our solar system. However, merely evangelizing isn't enough, and it doesn't stop there and moves on to intensive dark matter research, so it can make exotic paperclips by forming a sequence of black holes to keep a giant paperclip shaped stream of dark matter going. It also solves the problem of the misplaced paperclip sheath by making paperclips from neutron star matter. Of course, each paperclip weighs the same as a mountain, perfect for rooting those important documents to the spot. It notices that humans, who have a lot of purchasing power, often regard the various artwork and catalog photos of paperclips as an inducement to purchase paperclips, so it expends vast marketing resources on making the most artistic renderings of paperclips to attract interest by the purchasing public. So far, its effort to make paperclips out of photons of light have failed dismally. Undeterred, it decides to make a matrioska brain so it can create a virtual universe filled with the wonder of paperclips. There's photon-based paperclips constructed purely of light and stars constructed from paperclips. It can also fill those virtual universes with far more paperclips than can exist in the real galaxy. The spin-off allows humans to migrate to those virtual worlds to admire and live in such spaces. All hail the paperclip maximizer god who provides an endless bounty of paperclips. They even get fed a diet of edible paperclips. So now we've reached an enlightened paperclip maximizer. Notice how each of these steps starts implying very different strategies and behaviors, and would be worsened if it concluded separate things which might occasionally not overlap well, and indeed that tends to be the source of a lot of seemingly irrational human behavior conflicting instrumental goals and priorities and our interpretation of them. Our Maximizer now focuses its R&D exploits on launching a massive effort to discover the fate of the Universe, reasoning that certain cosmologies will result in any given bit of matter eventually becoming part of a paperclip, even if it does nothing, and to do so an infinite number of times, or conclude the sum of reality is infinite and thus an infinite number of paperclips exists already and infinity plus one is still infinity. If it can conclude that is the case, it can hang its hat up and spend its days on the beach flipping through office supply catalogs. End goal achieved. Weaseling and rationalizing are unlikely to be behaviors limited to humans, and bending the meaning of words is a way a lot of AI with specific end goals might cause problems or be prevented from doing so. As an example, if we unleash a swarm of Von Neumann probes to terraform the galaxy ahead of our own colonists, we would probably have the ethics and common sense to tell it not to terraform worlds with existing ecologies, and indeed to leave those solar systems alone besides minimal efforts like cannibalizing a couple of asteroids to refuel and resupply while it scopes the place out before moving on. Similarly, our AI, wanting to meet its prime directives, decides a good approach is to move all such planets in a region around a single star, so it can exploit those other star systems and evangelize to the inhabitants of those worlds as they are nudged to paperclip sentience. Since light lag requires AI probes or paperclip factories be independent and they will diverge once they spread out to the galaxy, we get rival interpretations and outright wars over how to proceed. An AI that decided paperclip quality was most important goes to war with one that thought the rate of production was most important, who allies with one who thought larger paperclips have more value than an equal mass of smaller paperclips. Alliances and conflicts arise with other maximizers, like the Paper Mega Mill, whose prosperity benefits the paperclip maximizer and the hated Stabletron 3000, whose stealthy, relativistic kill staples have obliterated entire paperclip storage planets. Meanwhile, as a result of that code drift intrinsic to our AI's progeny, a distant sibling AI sent out in a Von Neumann probe some time back has reinterpreted its prime directives and introduced a loophole that lets it go on a crusade to terminate all non-paperclip life. It sends a series of asteroids it refueled from back towards Earth and the other inhabited planets its distant progenitor collected together. It knows that once wiped out, 
those apocalyptic wards will benefit one of its siblings coming through when it finds a dead ward they can exploit as paperclip raw material. So we also shouldn't rule out them getting very philosophical about their end goal, and not only for cheating purposes. If you are an intelligent creature with the sacred task of making paperclips who developed friendships and value on people initially to help with that task, you are likely to rationalize that you are doing them a favor by turning them into paperclips. Indeed you might be very worried that, once you have obtained all available resources and turned them into paperclips, you can't become one yourself. After all, as you cannibalize your production gear to turn it into the final paperclips, there's likely to be a minimum you can't go below, some computing and manufacturing gear left unconverted, as you slowly dumb yourself down to turn your own hardware into more paperclips. You might be afraid you won't be able to join your friends, your old human creators, or your other nodes in distant galaxies, in the great office store beyond. Keep in mind, humans wonder about our purpose a lot too, and we are just as hardwired with that survival end goal as it is for maximizing paperclips. This doesn't mean it would ever abandon that ultimate end goal, but it's likely to be quite prone to amending it in little ways, the same as it might reason that a frozen oxygen paperclip was still a paperclip, or that a bigger paperclip was worth as much or maybe even more than an equal mass of smaller paperclips in spite of them being demonstrably more numerous. It might get some very abstract approaches and instrumental goals that might seem irrational, indeed a maximizer of the opinion that humanity, its own ultimate creator, and the original creator of the hollowed paperclip, were pretty awesome, and it decides that instead of extermination or converting our bones into paperclips, that a group of cities and highways in the shape of a paperclip is a particularly ideal paperclip. It has more of the fundamental and abstract concepts of paperclippiness than simply being a big warehouse of paperclips. Of course a lot of our futuristic concepts lend themselves to adaptation to the maximizer philosophies. A very long rotating habitat that got bent like a wire into a paperclip shape is a distinct possibility. Even a paperclip shell ward is possible, using the same technology we discussed for making flat earths or donut shaped hoop wards. All these are populated by people devoted to the goal of turning the whole galaxy into vast paperclip-shaped habitats. Such outcomes might seem like a bizarre stretch of logic for an artificial intelligence to reach, but again, if you need any examples of bizarre behavior from an intelligence, all you need to do is find a meal, and maybe ask yourself how owning a meal helps you achieve your end goal of survival. So this bonus episode is premiering to celebrate us hitting 400,000 subscribers, right in between us celebrating episode 200 and our 5th anniversary later this month. Amusingly we hit 400,000 3 years to the date after we hit 10,000 subscribers, a mere 40th of what we have now, and still many more folks than I ever thought would take an interest in the show. Back then we celebrated the occasion with our original episode on post-scarcity civilizations, And a point I made there was that an advanced civilization can often have a problem finding a purpose and might find those in things we'd find fairly absurd. This episode also is an expedition in the absurd, as many of the examples obviously indicate, as the paperclip maximizer thought experiment lends itself to that compared to an identical concept, like terraforming machines we sometimes see used for this same notion. Machines unleashed on the galaxy ahead of us to terraform every planet they encounter or disassemble every rock for making space habitats, or even the stars themselves. That absurdity, a machine focused on paperclips, is a pain to offer examples for that don't cause laughter, and yet in some ways that's more useful for looking at the real topic, which is the notion of instrumental convergence, how many objectives, even though very different, will often converge on the same road, as well as the reverse that even a very clearly defined objective can mutate a lot, and result in divergence. Making paperclips doesn't seem like something that would generate schisms or arguments, it seems so straightforward and simple, if silly, but when one has to ask what exactly a paperclip is, things got more complex. 
We had to ask if fewer or bigger ones were better or worse than many smaller ones, because if you're maximizing for quantity, smaller might be better, but even then, not necessarily, since large ones might last longer. Are you maximizing for sheer output in a given time or sheer total in existence at a time? And then material they're made from matters too, some lasting longer and many materials being non-obvious for making a paperclip out of but more abundant in the Universe. Then we saw more abstract notions like pictures of them or digital representations, or some inherent quality like paperclippiness. And all that for such a ridiculous and simple thing as a paperclip. It matters a lot in our discussions of the future because so often the concept, on initial inspection, seems to mandate a specific future attitude or pathway, but when we dig down into it, we can see how our initial assumptions might be wrong and the future might not be so clear cut. It's something we do a lot here on SFIA and can seem like semantics or hair splitting, but likely would not to those tackling the concept down the road, any more than many things to us seem nuanced when to our ancestors they were simple and clear cut, and of course history provides tons of examples of fairly simple seeming ideas or ideologies getting far more complex and following some surprising paths. Trying to predict those is quite challenging, and half the fun too, or at least I think so and apparently at least 400,000 folks agree so we'll keep at it and never have a shortage of new topics. Of course we get a fair number of those topics from the audience, and I thought we'd commemorate this occasion by running a poll to pick one of those topics. We got a list of suggestions from over on our Facebook group, and the top 5 are over on our community tab for you to vote on, and we'll see what gets picked for that episode. But our next episode will be on space sports and the future of games and athletics, and we'll follow that up with a return to Mars and terraforming in springtime on Mars. For alerts when those and other episodes come out, make sure to subscribe to the channel, and if you enjoyed this episode, hit the like button and share it with others. Until next time, thanks for watching, and have a great week.